Those are our worksheets that are yes. the same thing, but it, it's just a way of giving you. This one's a little more easier. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to fill up both or could we use for your use on, yeah. yeah. And then when we summarize it at the end, you'll just help me with what you've written down. Okay. So I do have a quick question. Do we have access to town ordinances anywhere? You don't have a. Or yeah, okay. no, 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 no. Nope, did not. Um, um, you should get a book. Yeah. I yes. have it. I have so it. So you can you look anything up tonight? I have mine. Okay. Text. We will leave it up here. Okay. Turn well, it I mean, I'm not sorry, but oh, I've read it a thousand times. It will help you though. Like there's a special yeah. use section. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when you look at like special use permitting and, and so there are times it helps me look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Adrian ask does a good Ryan. job. Ask Brian if you can. Ask Ryan. Ryan yeah. or Adrian, but I'm Brian. I've read it Oh dear. Okay. Do you want me to call it the order? I'm going to call this meeting to order on January 10th at 6.31 p.m. So welcome everybody tonight. This is our first meeting as a Planning and Zoning Adjustment Board, so we're going to ask for your patience tonight. We're going to be working through first time together, first time with you guys. Um, I'm going to go now through the approval of the agenda. Um, I do have an amendment to add and review the adoption of our rules and procedures. Do I need to take a motion for that? To approve the agenda? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Any second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now we'll look at the approval of the minutes from our last meeting dated November 8th. Everybody has mm -hmm. in front of them. Mm -hmm. I have a motion to approval. Yep, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So um, now I've got some sign-ups for public comment tonight. Um, I need to go through this list and make sure um, everyone wishing to speak is either here for public comment section or are here to speak on a specific agenda item. So I'm going to go through this list and you can just let us know what you're here to speak on. Um, I have Richard Veray. Here. Richard, and it, was this one of the items on the agenda you're wishing to speak on or just public comment? Yeah, I just have some information. Buildings that are being built next to my property. That's public comment. Is it, is it about a particular item on the agenda? Uh, oh, you don't know about the agenda. Mm -hmm. What property are you located on? Uh, Apple Lane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we have two Apple Lanes. you in on the first hearing for Apple Lane on number four, on item three. Okay. Philip Cohen, I'm Mr. Cohen. I approve, I was approved to speak as a witness for number 675. Yes. Perfect, thank you. I'm probably going to butcher this, so I apologize. Ramesh? Yeah. Hi there, how are you tonight? Is there an item on the agenda you wish to speak to, or would you just like to speak in during no, our public just, comment section? Especially the item on um, uh, number five. Okay. Do you like to speak on number five, yeah, or you just you just just, just okay. okay? And and Ken Buckner. The item number six. The item number six. Okay. So what we'll do is add those public comments to those specific items. Um, I also have. Gary here, Gary Wald for yes. item five. Yes. Mike Anderson. Here. And Mike, is that number uh, item one? I need one? to change it to seven, please. Seven. Josh, you're here for seven. <clears throat> so, Adrian, do you want me to go through the public comments since I don't have anybody wishing to speak to public comments? Yeah, that's just 
just who signed up for the public comment section. We have witnesses that will go through the process. All right, so we'll move on to old business. I don't have anything carried over. No old business carried over. Okay, and then that'll open up for new business tonight. And the first thing on our agenda is election of a vice chairperson. Um, Let me talk about the rules of procedure first before you do that. Um, I sent you a copy of that in an email a couple weeks ago. I hope you've all had time to look over it. It, it really covers your role as the Board of Adjustment and what you can and can't do with that authority. We had that training at the beginning of this, so you, you're clear on what that means. The, the things I wanted to talk about were uh, the importance of attendance. So um, the rules of procedure say that you should really be here every meeting, but 75% um, of the meetings a year is required. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. And I wanted to talk about the date and time of the meeting. Um, these rules of procedure say the second Tuesday of the month at six o'clock at six, I'm sorry, wrong board. <laughs> right, right, exactly. The fourth Thursday of the month at 6.30. So if that works for everyone, we'll leave it that way. If you want to discuss that, we can. Do we have to meet again this month? No. So going forward will be the fourth Thursday? Fourth, fourth Thursday at 6.30. Fourth Thursday at 6.30. Vote. Do we have to vote on the date or? We'll just have to vote to adopt this document. So I just wanted to make sure you didn't have anything, other issues with it. If you don't, we can go ahead and adopt it. So we'll make a motion to um, adopt the rules of procedures. So moved. Yep. All in favor? All second. Aye. 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 Nominations for vice chairperson. You know you want to share the fun. <laughs> I'll nominate the gentleman on my right. Yes. Patrice second. I'll second that. Oh, great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Thank you. That's You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, All right, that moves us to the fun part. Okay. All right, so <laughs> item one. <clears throat> we have the pro uh, public hearing for variance. The property is zoned R21 and is located at 31 Bent Branch Lane, further identified by Buncombe County Parcel Identification Number 9741235245. The variance request is for encroachment upon the required 30-foot front yard setback for construction of a single-family dwelling. We'll now open this evidentiary hearing to hear a request for variance. For the board must base its decision upon competent, relevant, and substantial evidence in the record. Witnesses must, be swear, must swear or affirm to their testimony. Ask for any board conflicts. So the parties to this case are entitled to an impartial board. A board member may not participate in this hearing if he or she has a fixed opinion about the matter, a financial interest in the op outcome of the matter, a close relationship with an affected person. Does any board member have any partiality to disclose or recuse themselves? No. Susanna. There's one important thing that we forgot to add to the agenda, okay. and that's the swearing in of all of you. Oh, okay, yeah, perfect. So we're going to do that before we move any further. So we should do it all at once instead of doing it five different times. If um, it's like kindergarten reading out loud in class, if you just <laughs> repeat after me. Um, I, in your name, I, I, Susanna Michael Bennett, do solemnly and sincerely swear, do do solemnly and sincerely sincerely swear, swear that I will support the Constitution and laws of the United States, that I will be faithfully and bear true allegiance, <laughs> that, I, that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance, okay. uh, I will be faithful and bear true allegiance. To the state of North Carolina, 
State of North Carolina, and to the constitutional powers and, the constitutional powers and authorities which are or may be established, which are or may be established, for the government thereof, for the government thereof, that I will endeavor to support, that I will endeavor to support, maintain and defend, maintain and defend. The Constitution and laws of said state, Constitution and laws of said state, not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States, not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States, to the best of my knowledge and ability, to the best of my knowledge and ability, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office, as Board of Adjustment member for the Town of Woodfin to help me God. So in the case of 31 Bent Branch Lane, um, I'd also make sure prior exposure to evidence, I'd like to ask any board member who have any information or special knowledge about the case that may not come out at the hearing tonight to please describe that information for the record so that the interested parties will know and can respond. So now we have a standing determination. In order to act as a party in this case, an individual must have legal standing. The applicant, property owner, and local government have standing. Other individuals may have standing if they will suffer special damages. If you wish to act as a party, please provide evidence to establish that you will suffer special damage from the requested development. This will be in 31 Bent Branch Lane. We do have uh, Ryan Blue. We, are, we do have you listed. Anybody else who wish to show standing in this matter? Perfect. <laughs> no pressure, Ryan. No pressure. Okay. That's it. So, Ryan and any other person and wishing to speak and testify. So, anybody who's going to be speaking or testifying tonight, please stand. I'm going to do some swearing in. Yes. <laughs> All persons who wish to speak and testify in this case, please come forward and raise your right hand. You can stand right there. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you shall give to the board in this action shall be to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Okay, great. Thank you. Now we'll turn it over to Adrienne so that she can uh, introduce the hearing. As Susanna mentioned, this is a variance request for a setback encroachment, a front yard setback encroachment. Um, the requirement is uh, 20 feet. They're requesting to encroach approximately 10 feet to create a 10 foot front yard setback. Um, in their application, they reference topography as being the reason for the request. They've submitted a variance application and a site plan um, that you have there in front of you. You also have the standards that have to be met for a variance. Um, the, chair, the chairperson will go over those with you throughout the hearing. Um, and the applicant is here should you have further questions about the request. Ryan, would you like to come up and present your? Yeah, I think the, the request is, is rather straightforward uh, in the application. Uh, we describe the situation of this lot. It's actually, it does not have frontage to a street. It's accessed through uh, an easement that passes between two lots uh, that do have, that do about the street. Um, the topography on the site is, is rather steep. And because of our, because of the access situation, we're really limited on how we can access. There's really only one place that we can access the site. Um, and at that point, uh, it'd be, it would be unsafe to, to create a, a driveway on the existing topography. Uh, so in order to raise the, the site to the elevation it would need to be raised to, to make a safe driveway, it would uh, create a, a pretty significant disturbance to the site. Um, and a loss of trees. So the request is, is really to allow us to get closer to the road to avoid having to um, raise the site 
as much as what would otherwise be required and thereby reducing disturbance significantly um, and helping to maintain uh, the, ma the majority of the site in its present condition. Are you the owner? I'm the landscape architect for the project. Anyone else have Okay. I was just going to say, this person purchased a property to build a house that has no frontage and basically can't be built on unless they have variances. It can be built on, yeah. but it would it would require significant disturbance because the grade would have to be raised to an elevation. An elevation, and in order to raise the grade to the ele elevation, the tieback slopes would be rather significant. Okay. It still will be, but by, by reducing the setback, we're able to manage and reduce the disturbance to the right. site. Okay. Okay. We're going to take a few minutes and discuss this. Yeah, no one, no one is here to oppose it. No, no, no. So it's. I just think it's absurd. Well, do you have an actual drawing? Yeah, where? Mm -hmm. Is this, this one. the actual lot? What? Let's see it. It's right here. This is the lot so this is here. The lot, this is oh, yeah, I saw that. So this is yeah. the driveway from the left. This is the house. This is the garage. How, okay, so the where are we going to put the setback? We're talking about well, coming here. What's the size of the lot? How many people are going to show up? Percentage of an acre? Yeah. 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 So that's what we're going to do. Yeah. 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 That's proposed something instead of this. Okay. Okay. It's over an acre. It's over an acre. Yeah, it looks like it. Thank you. So, and then you have some leeway because we, it's not real clear where, where we measure from our ordinance to say whether you're measuring from the back of the curb or whether you're measuring from the front of the curb. Yeah, there's, there is some ambiguity there on the ability to on the ability to approve it. So our setback requirements are from the other That's what Adrian is saying. So the system side of it's not real clear in our ordinance. Okay. So the part of that setback could be just ask for the crowd to be a little bit quieter so we can hear each other um, while we deliberate a little bit. So here's the lot, okay? Mm -hmm. And Here's the lane that goes up to the lot, and there's a right of way, an easement, right? mm -hmm. an easement that sits on both sides of that, that gives access to that lot. And they're looking for to change the setback and from build the house a little bit closer to the spot. A little bit closer to there, right. Okay. So, they don't hold it. so it's a 10 foot. It's a 10 foot difference. It looks, yeah, yeah, but looks good. Good. Okay, got it? Yeah, but it doesn't really sit on the street, so. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's not. Okay. Do staff support this? Great. Right. Staff support strength, yeah. I think it's good. Are you going to represent 33 also? No. 
that's another. That's another. Does it change anything of, to do with? It, it, does it have the change have anything to do with access to utilities or anything like that? No, ma'am. Not, not at all. Okay. See that everybody's looking at the first item. I want to discuss that. Obviously, if it fails on any point, variance can be granted. Right. Uh, so we should go, should go over every point? We should go over every point? Ma'am? Should we go over every point? Well, let's, my, my thought is to discuss them one at a time. They right. can be in a roadblock. Good. There's no need to discuss the ones above. Gotcha. Okay. Start at the beginning. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, on the one, will necessary hardship result from strip application of the ordinance? I don't believe so. Well, I think financial hardships would definitely be occurred with the strict application of the ordinance because you would have to spend twice as much money to break, make the lot. Right. Build I would agree. Does the hardship result from conditions that are peculiar to the property, such as location, size, or topography? Yes. 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 Is the hardship a result of action taken by the applicant or the property owner? No. no. Is the requested variance consistent with spirit, purpose, and intent of the ordinance, such as public safety and substantial justice is achieved? Yes. Yes. I think we can close public comments. You're welcome to go have a seat, Brian. Thank you. Can I make a motion even on the chair? I'm going to go ahead and ask for a motion. Does anybody like to make a motion? I can move that we approve. Do you have to read it? So, like you have to say, um, based on the Mm -hmm. Yes and why. Can we do the first one? Sure. Okay. Can I do the first one now? Can I, can I call a motion? I mean, can I make a motion? Oh, you can you can ask for motion and word it. Okay, perfect. I'm going to ask for motion and word it. So um, I'm going to say that we approve it based on um, the necessary hardship would be resulted in a financial hardship based on the strict application of the ordinance. The hardship results from a condition that's peculiar to the property um, based on topography. Um, that the hardship is not a direct result action of the owner and that it is um, the variance is consistent with the spirit purpose and intent of our ordinance mm -hmm. so moved mm -hmm. second yeah all in favor aye, aye. So that'll take us down to item number two. The property is zoned R21 and is located at 33 Bent Branch Lane, further identified by Buncombe County Parcel Identification Number 97412269939. The variance request is for encroachment upon the required 30-foot front yard setback for construction of a single-family dwelling. We will now open the evidentiary hearing to hear a request for the variance for board must base our decision on competent, relevant, and substantial evidence in the record. Witnesses must be sworn in or confirmed to their testimony. Is there anybody here to speak for item two, yeah. 33 bent? Come on up, sir. Come on down. Can you state your name and address, please? It's uh, Michael Barton, 1502 Timber Drive, uh, 28804. Mr. Barton, and are you, you representing the applicant? I'm potentially buying the property, yes. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and swear you in. So do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you shall give to the board in this action shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you back? I do. Great. You can go ahead. 
so my architect couldn't make it, so whatever Brian said, that's exactly how I feel. <laughs> I was going to pour dressing on the salad, on the word salad. Now, he really couldn't make it. He is not feeling well, so I'm going to do my best here. And you're interested in a potential purchase? I am, but I we uh, were going to ask for a 10-foot setback, but we, we looked at it with my architect again, and we could actually just do it in, in half. We could do about 15, and it'd be safe. Um, we need to, to really probably put a garage up uh, for safety reasons, for inclement weather, and, and various other, other reasons. Also, if we, if we go 30 feet back on this slope, I mean, we would have to build a bridge to get to the front door, literally. <laughs> so I'm just saying, we're, it's, it's the, the cost of bring, you know, is, would be astronomical for, first off, but then also uh, the look of the property. I've talked to the owners and the association over there, and they're afraid of what it would look like also, too. So I want to keep in the, in the quality of the neighborhood, too. So we figure about 15 feet, about halfway would really work very well for so us. So it's not 10 foot then, it's 15 foot. Yeah, we want, we would go ahead and go to 15 on it without any problem, so. And I skipped you, Adrian. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry? I skipped Adrian for her staff report. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there anything you'd like I'm for us? Any okay, I was going to say, I'd like, is there anything you'd like for us to know? Okay. All right, if you'll, we'll take a few minutes to deliberate, so if you guys can please keep it down. Okay. Do you want to go through your work? Yeah. So I have a question. He's requesting in this application a 10 foot, but should that be should corrected that be, to 15? How do we change that? I mean, that has to be changed before. Did we change everything or did I leave part something out? I, I, it should say 15. Oh, okay. Um, the application it says 15. Yeah. Once you get into the list. Okay. That's good. Okay. Okay, yep. couple other homes up there that are right at the 15 mark too and we thought that would be really suitable with everyone else to be kind of uh, so that everything stays consistent Since most of the properties on this road have done the same thing, does somebody else want to read it? So does, I'd like to open it up for a motion. Does anybody have a motion at this time? Oh, so what do we have to read? The worksheet. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion that, should I say, to accept? To yeah. approve, or, and or and then read this, or yeah. just read these first. You, so your motion to approve is based on yeah. Something. Okay, I'd like a motion uh, make a motion to approve based on the fact that that the unnecessary hardship results from the strict application of the ordinance, that the hardship results from conditions that are peculiar to the property, such as location, topography that the hardship results 
uh, actions taken, it, it, it hardship does not result from actions taken by the property owner. And that the variance is consistent with the spirit, purpose, and intent of the ordinance, and the public safety is secured and substantial justice is achieved. I second that. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Ron, I do have a Person who filled out a standing on that. So, where do they fit in this? If you have someone who wants to testify this and call witnesses, they have to come up and show to you they have standing. Okay. And I don't think you can leave it to describe what they've got to prove when they come up on the way. All right, so we're going to move on now to item three. Um, which is a variance hearing for the property, which is zoned R7 and is located at 99999 Apple Lane, further identified by Buncombe County Parcel Identification Number 9730808269. The variance request is for encroachment upon the required 20-foot side yard setback for construction of a two-family dwelling. We will now open the evidentiary hearing to hear a request for variance. The board must base its decision upon competent, relevant, and substantial evidence in the record. Witnesses must be sworn in at this time. Is there anybody who's going to speak on behalf of 999 Apple? Item agenda three. No. Okay. It's open. It's open. Is the applicant here? No. They're not here. I need to do something, or we just make a. Either dismiss it, pay for peer, or continue to your next session. Oh, continue. What do you say? We okay. can continue it or dismiss it. That's the board's pleasure. It's your pleasure. Well, I think with so much going on, there's a ball game on tonight. So, and I think everybody's been sick. <laughs> so, um, I would just move to continue it to next month and give them a chance to go back next month. Sure. If you dismiss it, they have to resubmit all over again. Yeah, yeah. So let's just leave. So let somebody second that. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we're going to move to continue item three. And item four as well. I was just oh. going to say. Yeah. And I'll make a motion to continue item four. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 See, we are going to get out here at 8 o'clock. That's <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, it's Alabama, Georgia. Oh, down to Georgia. I used to live in Minnesota. Football is big, big, big down here. <laughs> okay. And that's going to move us to our special use permit application for item number five. Um, this property is in community shopping and is located at 99999 North Merriman Avenue, further identified by Buncombe County Parcel Identification Number 9730880404973088 Special use permit request is for a townhome development. Um, we will now open the evidentiary hearing to hear requests for the variant, or I'm sorry, for the special use permit. I have a long list. Uh, the board must base its decision upon competent, relevant, and substantial evidence in this record. Uh, witnesses must swear or affirm to their testimony. Um, so we have quite a list of people who filled out to be a witness tonight on this. So I'm going to call out your names. Sorry, lots of paper. Just so we can get everybody sworn in. Uh, Philip Cohen? Here. Yeah. Okay, get you to stand up for me. Get you sworn in. Um, Darren or Stephanie Buck? 
Linda Dever. James uh, Maltese, Maltese. Jim McAllister. Right. Uh, Wilson <coughs> Sims Jr. A fan for me. Gary Wald. Anybody else that's going to be presenting or testifying on this subject matter tonight, please stand up. This is where everybody in. Oh. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you shall give to the board in this action shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guide? Thank you. And you can have a seat. Go ahead and turn it over to Adrian so she can present the staff report. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm the applicant's attorney. I don't know if I need to get uh, a form of I assume I'll be allowed to get the statement. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, this is a special use permit request for um, a townhome development. It's the develop. It's the developer for the terraces at Reynolds Mountain, directly adjacent to this parcel. Um, same same concept. The special use request is for a group development. Um, I'll get into that a little bit more in a minute, uh, but as, as far as what the application and the and the site plans presented <coughs> include, it's a 9.54 acre parcel, um, and the master plan consists of 42 single family townhomes. This request is for phase one of the development for 20 of those units, um, at a density of approximately 4.4 units per acre. In addition to the general standards for the special use permit. Um, you also have the standards that I provided you for group development that will need to be addressed in addition to those other six. Um, there are several items in your packet that the applicant has submitted. Uh, the application, a site plan, a map of neighboring uses, um, and they have also provided a document. Same worksheet you have for the standards that have to be met for the special use permit and explain why those standards are met with this submittal. Mm -hmm. Does the staff have a recommendation? I don't t typically. All right, so who's representing the developer? You can start your presentation. Speak, give us your name and my name is Harold Kessler and um, I'm, I'm the managing member of the applicant Skyfin developers I live at 408 Kessler place um, which is in the townhome development that we just completed uh, if I make any any further if I can continue <laughs> okay um, the So to first, I need to familiarize your, and I'm sure every one of you are familiar with the area, but just to be sure we don't, I don't miss anything here. Um, this is the, if you will, the property. It's nine and a half acres. It consists really of two parcels, the YMCA parcel here, and this small parcel here that is owned by actually by the actual, the association, the village association. Um, the property, uh, borders on Reynolds, uh, Senator Reynolds uh, uh, Road, which you're looking at this at quite an angle. So 
it's you don't see the road but it's coming up along the property line comes back up if you were like this um, in this view you can quickly see the uh, views duplexes looking down over it um, you can't see a wood fin water tower that's right here there is um, adjacent to it here the um, excuse me I've forgotten the name of it Emerald Ridge Rehabilitation and Care Center here. This is all um, commercially zoned. This is uh, the three or four story apartments in the village. And this is the uh, senior living or assisted living uh, facility that's there now. So from a location standpoint, The black outlined area is the area that is the property that we're, we're discussing today. Surrounding it all, on all but one side is and inclusive of this parcel. It's zone CS commercial or community shopping. I guess is it commercial or community shopping? CS community shopping, um, which allows for a, a very broad set of uses, um, uh, uh, be it warehouses, hotels, um, auto repair, a, a great deal, a, 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 a lot of commercial uses, none of which are the subject of today's discussion. Other than I, I, I just, you should understand, that's what um, uh, that's what it's zoned for, and more importantly, what surrounds it are all those commercial uses um, that I've described. Um, Adjacent and contiguous to it, and I said it a few minutes ago, but I want to, I want to repeat it, are um, the Emerald Ridge Rehabilitation and Care Center, um, the Reynolds Mountain um, uh, Views Townhouses, my, our project, the Terraces, Harmony um, uh, Senior if you, Assisted Living, Senior or Senior Living, um, here, the, this is all the contiguous ones, and and then immediately adjacent to all these contiguous ones are a host of commercial uses. Uh, once again, it's simply to 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 uh, quite frankly, I'm trying to garner your re, your um, uh, respect is a poor word, but to I, I just want you to understand that I believe what what I'm about to show you is a substantial improvement over anything that's been done here, except for, uh, I, I can proudly say, our project that we just completed. The project, incidentally, our design team consists of, and most of the members are here tonight, ACE Engineering, they're licensed civil engineers in the North Carolina, state of North Carolina. Um, site Design Studio, licensed uh, planning and landscape architects in North Carolina. Form and Function Architecture, licensed architects in North Carolina. Um, right Side Development, uh, Design and Construction Consultants and licensed uh, PEs in North Carolina. And the reason I bring this up, what's most important is the whole team, but for me, I'm a halfback, um, uh, are locals and they've resided in the Asheville area for many years. They worked with me and, and we've all worked together to do the project that you, that I hope you, I, I'm hoping that you've taken note of, which is, are these townhomes Asheville Terraces? Um, I believe that they've been well received. I've been told they're well received within the community within uh, uh, both people up on the mountain and uh, uh, the village. And I haven't heard uh, anything negative at this point. We are very, very happy and proud of this development. The architecture for what that we're about to do use is similar. It's not going to be exactly like this, but it will be mountain modern. Uh, 
Can I ask a yes, question? Yes, sir. So, no, of course. So you're showing this, this is the ones that have existed, not the ones you're building. Yes, sir. How do yours relate to this as far as, like, these are two and three story. How many stories are you? I don't see any drawings that I see. They'll, they'll, be, they'll be very similar. I'll explain it right now. Okay. Thank you. If you look at the site plan, they have upside down. If you look at the site plan that you can provide, mm -hmm. yeah. and you'll see these, du these duplexes. You're looking at the footprints to the duplexes. You'll see um, 14 duplexes or 28 units right here. You'll see four duplexes or eight units right here. You'll see um, two duplexes or four units right here and two freestanding homes. There are two, two designs that we had to use in order to build this project here. And we call them an upslope and a downslope design because of the slope, uh, because of the terrain. So I'm going to set this here. And let's see if we can do it this way. The upslope units are going to be very similar design. This is a two unit building. You come in you, to the garages underneath. There's a foyer. You come up to the living area with typically a master on the main. Excuse me. And then there will be two or three bedrooms on top. So it's, it's I'm not sure what you call it, two or three stories here, because I note that, you, that here you always discuss um, air conditioned area. So the air conditioned area, if you will, is obviously above the garage in these two stories. Uh, the, the lower units, or the downslope units, or for the most part, every, every building that's downslope like this, you instead um, will come in from the driveway, it'll look like a one-story building, but then, then you'll have your master on the main, you'll have your kitchen, living area, um, and garage, but then you go down to the, to the bedrooms, to the secondary bedrooms, guest bedrooms, and um, they'll have, if at all possible, uh, walk-out terraces, I think you call those. Sir, did, did, that, did, did that cover? Yeah, so yours is, it's not going to be no higher than three-story? No. Okay. Well, not. Um, I, let me, I, I hate doing caveats. There are two, small, two homes that go vertical that could be considered four stories or yet to be designed. The, the classic, the 24 or 25 or 25 pa uh, um, pads, and they go vertical. So, you, so this could be three stories above the garage, and I don't know what you're going to call that, whether that's three or four stories. Which one's the single family? It's these two, mm -hmm. these two three standing right here. Okay. okay. Um, uh, while we're talking about the the design, so let, let me let me first be sure that we understand the location, because once again, in greater detail, if we look at in, in greater detail, there's the Woodfin Water Tower. There are the um, the views. Um, duplexes. Over here is the um, rehabilitation home, vacant property, the new dental, the new dental, uh, dental clinic there, the three or four story apartments here, the assisted living here. So what's, Im what's important to note with this are, um, I think there are two very important areas that need to be uh, noted. Number one, uh, with regard to parking, access, and driveways. Only these units and these units are serviced by Reynolds, Reynolds Mountain Road. So you have the two freestanding homes have a shared drive on the Reynolds Mountain Road. These um, four units are, are, have a single access to Reynolds Mountain Road. And these eight units have single access. 28 of the 42 units have only have access to Cobbler's Way and, you know, and down to Merriman. The re that inherent 
Um, this, what's inherent in that design is taking a tremendous amount of potential pressure off of Reynolds Mountain Road and off of the traffic that's going up to a much more of a single family, single family uh, area up here. Um, I'm not going to tell you that I'm smart. It's my team that figured this out, but I am very proud of the design. I, I must tell you. Um, the, 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 the question of ingress and egress to every one of these uh, is simply the drives are located in such a manner that if we use normal design standards um, uh, that are provided by the, the various codes, and forgive me, I don't know them. If you want to know them, I'll, we'll, we'll ask the professionals. But the point is you're going to have appropriate view corridors coming out. You have appropriate stacking because those are those are 28 units. We have all of this here to stack and queue. We never get involved with the public road for stacking or queuing. The same here because these are the design is bifurcated. We have small group here, small group here, a small group here. There's no opportunity for queuing or stacking on public roads. So there's only one road for ingress and egress for those 28. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, now, is there emergency access through the other end for emergency vehicles at all? No. This is, my design team explains, this is allowable under current code, inclusive of fire. There has to be a, I think they call it a hammer turn or a, 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 a way of, of the uh, equipment turning around. We have that here. Yeah. And that's a two-lane road. Yes, ma'am. Um, with regard to, to parking, uh, there is no off-site parking. All of the parking is self-contained in front of every home. Um, you have a drive area that can hold a couple of cars. You have a two-car garage that, or possibly one and a half. It could get a little skinny down here. But you'll have, there's plenty of parking for every unit. And so circling back to the original question of, um, uh, of what will they look like or how will they function, they'll function very similar to this. But the difference is, this was a pretty tight, this is a pretty dense construction, to be honest with you. It had to be done because of the site. In this particular case, we're only going to have 4.4 units per acre. In this particular case, these footprints represent about, uh, forgive me, I don't know if it's 11 or 10. Represents 11.2% of the nine and a half acres. The footprints together with all of the uh, uh, impervious area or the paved area represents less than 25% of the site. 75% of this site remains open. So what is it? Is it too steep to build on? Um, is it, what, what is it? It just like? lends the site, that there, there was a natural area here that we could build on. With, and we're going to have to disturb a lot of land, I mean, to get all yeah. this, don't get me wrong, to, to grade all of this. What happens right here, if you look closely, there is a, a um, I'm going to call it a valley. There's probably a better word for it. Guys, I don't know, what, what do you call the area that's, uh, that's really depressed there? Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and you really can't do anything here. It should, needs to be preserved. So we, it, it, it actually goes underneath. It, if you were to drive by this area here, you would notice between here and here is a very steep drop. So the terrain really lends itself to this. I, I just want to make sure. No, no, it's okay. We, have, we had an original design that linked it all yeah. by snaking a road up like this. That's how that dead end happened. Yeah. But it, in the end, it wasn't worth all of the brain damage, excuse my language, of doing all of this only to link 42 units to dump onto this road. I, we just didn't, I just didn't think it was necessary. Sure. I just want to make sure that you don't come back to us or somewhere and say, oh, w by the way, we have all this land left and we want to fill it in with more. So what will happen is, when developed, these will all fall under HOAs to be formed. Okay. The HOAs will control. The HOAs will control, it's a very important question. The HOAs will control the amount of parking, they're going to control the maintenance of, of, of the outside. They will disallow uh, uh, any uh, uh, any potential 
uh, development or disturbance uh, of this once, once it's resettled and after we develop it. Um, the uh, HOAs will control garbage, will control, I, I know I'm telling you things you already know, but I just need to, I just can't overemphasize that there are um, proper controls in place throughout. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, in fact, I developed, or we developed, um, lots here in which this area um, had a lot of nice trees and foliage. I've got this deed restricted when I did this, so you'll see people build little four houses along here, but they can't touch any of the, any of the um, uh, larger trees or larger, late larger um, uh, forest areas here. Gotcha. Um, uh, I don't have, I never represented to you, to the board, when we did this, that I was going to do that because the opportunity presented itself as we went forward. As I go forward with this project, opportunities will present themselves where I'll be able to preserve things like this. I just can't outline it now because we haven't gone that far with it. Okay. But you're not going to subdivide it. No, no, and it can't be done. Well, you're, you're I mean, it can't, once the HOAs are there, it can't be done. Okay. Your application says that this is phase one in 20 units of 42 units. Yeah, it's 42 units. There, there, there are 20. I, I, I heard that, and I think it's just semantic. I think what she was trying to explain was there's a, there are um, uh, 22, uh, uh, 20, yeah, there are 20 duplexes, mm -hmm. so that's a total of 40 units plus two single homes, single family homes. So you're not planning on coming back for phase two then? No. Oh, okay, that's where I misunderstood. Okay, no, I see no, phase no, one, that's what I'm asking. Okay. No. Because that kind of, like you're asking, I don't okay. want to see him come back and build again. Okay, no, this is okay. it. That's it, okay. okay. This is it. This is, I hope, one-stop shopping, and from here we're just going to go get this done okay. over a period of four to six years. Um, and I think what else I can tell you off of this, um, we've explained ingress and egress. I've explained uh, parking and all of that. I think um, if someone doesn't have a further question on this, I'm going to move on to the water, sewer, and, uh, and drainage. So, we've essentially, is Brad, correct me if I'm wrong, we're, we fully engineered the site drainage, water, sewer. We have water and sewer, we have letters from the appropriate authorities for water and sewer. They've been provided to uh, Adrian. Um, so we're, we're, we're good to go. We have construction level plans in with these with, with, I guess, in particular, um, MSD, is that it? Who do you have water and sewer plans in with? The water goes to the uh, water and sewer. Okay. The business for Joe Martin. Okay. Or what do you do? I, mean, I guess it's retired now, but uh, nonetheless, that's where the water goes. Sewer is in SD, and the storm and the uh, control is Okay. All of that's been proper. What I'm trying to get to is it's been properly designed. It's been designed by people who, who had a great deal to do in historically designing the mountain. And they're here doing this, and they did all of this down here for us uh, uh, in Nashville Terraces. Okay. Um, so yes, will we ever be able to see a rendering of what these buildings will look like completed? Yeah, I mean, we'll get, I'll get to, we will get to the point, yes. But, but right now we don't we don't know what they're going to look like. Well, you know it's going to be not modern architecture, and you know that it will be similar. But similar I cannot similar, tell you. Right. I cannot. I, I don't want to tell you the same as this. Right. But the, but but this is going to be. The differences are going to be all about. Forgive my vernacular. The, the lipstick that goes on here, mm -hmm. the articulation. Um, these units, because of where they are, are going to have to be a little less expensive. They're going to be a little less square footage. Mm -hmm. There'll be a little less articulation. These units up here, okay, which come up the mountain, warrant this level of architecture, and they should be at this level of architecture. Okay. What will the price point be of these? Uh, we're shooting for keeping a six in the six hundreds, 
believe it or not. <laughs> in the 600s down here, and up here, uh, 7 and 800. Uh, it's just the nature, it's the nature of today's costs. It's, it's, it's cost pushed, the price is being pushed. It's not being pulled by demand, there's nothing I can do. Can you get on the other side and show me? Which is going to be 600,000. Okay. <clears throat> Better stay in. These, if you will, the downslope are going to be, we're trying to hold them, keep a six in front of the price point for 600,000. These are going to be more like seven or 800. That was the final price that we got for our last phase here. How many split together the way? These, these, they all will be the lower units downslope, which we're going for 1,600 square feet. Um, uh, and again, air conditioned in the upper 1800. And the reason the upper 1800, it just has to do with what it takes to, to design a townhome on, on the upslope. It's, uh, Give me a moment. I want to make sure I didn't miss any of the things I'm supposed to bring up. I've been tutored. And talked about the maintenance and operation I think we I think that's understood I think it's important to note that because this is not a commercial enterprise because this is residential we have a 42 family community who's which is limited to their guests or their invitees that's different than a commercial enterprise that's open to the public and they're simply an unknown entity of people coming through, if you will, your neighborhood. I think that's, I, I, I don't know how else to say it more nicely in terms of what a positive attribute this is sure. to the community. For sure. Except the way you have it set up, you can't really have any more than people visiting each home. That's right. Because there's no place to That's park. right, exactly. And that's the intent. I mean, that, the point is that's a, that's the byproduct of doing this. Gotcha. And it's a very, very good byproduct, I think, for both the community, for the community, for uh, all parties involved. And it's a great byproduct for uh, the, um, um, for the village, because they now have 42 more families to go down and use their facilities. And we've added 30 plus so far already. I think we've gone a long ways and are going a long ways towards helping the village and making it a, vo a more vibrant, something more vibrant than it, than it has been. Board, have any questions? Uh, the, I, I do want to point out, and I know it, it's, it should be obvious, but I, I really want to point out this concept of 75% of this project will be open area in contrast to any development that is done at a commercial level, it's, it is 70% all hardscape and less than 30% open area. That's, that's a dramatic difference. <laughs> and that's what you're, if you're allowing us to do this, that's what it gets everybody. <clears throat> like to produce the MSB and water allocation and approval letters? I don't You need physical copies? I'll look. I, it should, it, I, I don't know your package. I didn't see your package. It might have been with, I know it was with what I submitted. I just don't know if it's in the package. Or no, I mean, I it would be, it, you would consider that probably backup or something. I don't, I don't know. I didn't. The answer is I know it's from it's submitted. It's in the email. I can pull up the email. It's clearly submitted. Okay. Um, I can do a condition. Yes, you can definitely. You should definitely get a condition. Pardon me, sir. Yeah. 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 
Okay. I mean, he's giving us his word and not that one, but. If, they if you get. give me a moment, I may just have those copied. It's kind of a problem. Um, so while I'm fumbling here, is there any more questions so I don't waste everyone's time? Ron, can we make that a condition if you can? For, for record, well, for his water and sewer approval letters, we can make it a condition of the approval too if we need to. Okay, if you'll do that, that'd be fine. I'll, you'll have it by tomorrow morning. Um, or if you give me an email, I'll get it out tonight. Uh, again, just give me a moment to. You have letters that you applied for these permits, or you have letters that no, say you No, we have letters approved. from them saying we have sufficient water and sewer to do that project on that site plan. Brad, I'm sorry, go. It's a, this requires you to do a sewer allocation, which is a, kind of an upfront design and it's a lot of work to board you'll just need a record that they have found that you do have capacity and the same goes with the water Correct. it's just a letter that comes from Woodton sewer water district uh, that says you know we do have the capacity to provide for these things and just to clarify what I said earlier the water design goes to Woodton which they help us kind of understand what needs to be Design, how it needs to be designed, and then it goes further, it goes to Raleigh. Yeah, well, this board doesn't need construction documents or design documents. It's, I think we have required to show the capacity, you have evidence of capacity. I have the document from Woodson Rodgers, I do not have the document from the SD. Okay, I have it right here. This is from the, uh, uh, the super saying it's uh, conditionally, conditionally approved. I'm very proud of you to do that. I, I was in that. <laughs> um, uh, from my viewpoint, I think the, and I hope I've convinced you of the same, um, this design and the subsequent, subsequent construction, it's going to meet and exceed or exceed all applicable regulations with special consideration to the, to the Reynolds Mountain community. Um, I've repeatedly stated all the conditions uh, uh, that we are aware of have been responded to thus far, and it's, it's our intent, my intent, to create a residential community um, that's harmonious with the community, harmonious with what we've done, um, what there is currently, and to honor its integrity and to bring additional value to the community. And I'm going to stand back. Uh, is there, I don't know what the procedure is from here. <laughs> um, can you tell me your design architect again? Design architect is um, uh, form and function architecture, Miles Alexander. Uh, previously, uh, in the prior project, we used someone who I'm thrilled with. Um, uh, Robert Todd, but uh, um, he's just so busy right now, I can't get push all of this through his office. But quite frankly, I would be there again. Um, he, he needs to get credit for that current design. Uh, he did a great job, as did Brian, done in conjunction with Brian uh, Sinclair, uh, Paint, Rock, uh, Paint Rock Construction. And I just—he needs to be—it needs to be noted that he was instrumental in the previous design, and he's a part of this to, uh, this today also. And so, part of our approval process is that we need to review an approved plan showing building locations, which you've clearly done, 
driveways that you've clearly got street parking spaces and recreation areas so do you feel like you've covered all of that in this yes ma'am are there dedicated recreation areas no okay. intentionally there's a possibility i'm going to run a path through there a paved path paved a, a, a small path uh, that takes you directly to the village as opposed to having walk down Reynolds Mountain Road, which is another problem. It's intentional that I'm not doing it because we have the YMCA there. There's so much available in the village. It would be contrary to what, to, to I think the mixed use intent of that, of the village. And there's no on street parking? No. Is there anything else you'd like for us to consider? Um, <laughs> no. Okay. No, I just want to be sure that you have, you know, you have everything you need. I'm going to step away. I think there are people that want to comment. And I, yes. So I, I do I have, one, before you leave, one more question. So you mentioned yes, on-street parking. So the, the residents are going to have their own garage. Yes. Are there designated parking areas for their guests? Yes. There will be, yes. Okay, I didn't, I missed that. Okay. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Oh, okay. So at this time, we go through our standing parties and our witness testimonies. I'm just going to call up based on the names that we have in front of us. So I have. Uh, Gary Cohen. Would you like to come up here? Philip Gary. Philip Gary Cohen. <laughs> Hi, I'm Philip Cohen. I'm the uh, treasurer for the Reynolds Mountain uh, Property Owners Association. And I want to thank you for allowing me to offer comments about this project. I want to make clear at the outset that I'm not opposed to the project, if done well, but the package of materials I reviewed suggests five issues. Five that should be explored prior to approval of this variance request. One, the two property lots are partly on steep slopes. Now, I realize Woodfin currently does not have a steep slope ordinance, but erosion, stormwater, and natural springs are a major issue, are major issues on Reynolds Mountain, it's especially in the views, which sits above the proposed site. And of course, storms are increasing in intensity, duration, and frequency. Prior to approval, a study using possibly a civil engineer, a geologist, a hydrogeologist is needed to assess the stability of the site and what is needed to minimize erosion, including a good stormwater management system. And I understand from the previous presentation that some of that may have already been done, but I think it is critical that that be in place. Um, I think you'd also want to see a good system for minimizing tree removal and clear cutting so as to minimize erosion. Two, I'd also suggest a plan is needed to minimize mud, debris, and stormwater runoff during storms. When the terraces were built, for example, and it is a very nice development, when the terraces were built, water and debris often poured down Senator Reynolds Road to Merriman. Um, a traffic study, number three, a traffic study may already have been done, but I think a traffic study should be conducted to indicate the best route to the construction site and the best way to minimize impact during construction on the community. I note that Senator Reynolds Road is asphalt, it lacks curbs, and I think the road portion by the terraces has not been finished. Construction trucks going up and down the road with sharp curves, and we all know what Senator Reynolds Road is like. Construction trucks going up and down that road will significantly impact traffic and the roads themselves. Possibly Woodfin should require a significant financial deposit or commitment to repair roads in a timely fashion after construction. Four, I think the proposal could include a provision for making Senator Reynolds Road safer for pedestrians 
and the dogs that walk up and down from the terraces and the terraces extension. I think this is already a public safety issue on the curved road that goes up Senator Reynolds. And then five, a map of the development in the packet I reviewed shows two new roads going into Senator Reynolds. Um, the topmost one is the one I want to mention. That topmost one is a 45 degree angle into Senator Reynolds versus the proposed lower roads, 90 degree angle into Senator Reynolds. Again, 45, topmost road, 45 degrees. And what that means when you drive out, you are turning your head all the way around at a curve. So you really can't see a car coming around. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure that's the safest um, degree. Um, put simply, it's dangerous to crane your head around to look left at traffic coming down Senator Reynolds Road at a 45 degree angle. Um, in sum, a delay in approval would allow time to study traffic and the site with an eye towards creating serious plans for managing erosion, stormwater, and traffic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maltese is here either. So that would be Jim McAllister. My name is Jim McAllister. I live at 162 Summit Tower Circle uh, on the top of Reynolds Mountain above this project. But before anything else, I want to say congratulations and thank you. Uh, I served for a little while on the adjustment board. Um, it, it's quite a task and I'm, I'm sincere. I'm personally, uh, my gratitude for serving on this board. So thank you and good luck. Um, good luck is, I meant that in a kind way. Good luck as a commissioner. <laughs> personally, I am not against this project. Uh, we need more housing in Woodfin, but there are some issues that need to be addressed. These two parcels are, par are partially located on steep slopes, and we don't have a steep slope ordinance at this time. And if you've been to the site and see the part of Reynolds Mountain called the Views is at the very top of a steep slope. Mm -hmm. This project or part of it is going to be built at the bottom of that steep slope. And without engineering and hydrology reports, I'd be very worried if I was you about what could possibly happen. The depressed area that they've referred to as a natural drainage area, it's a pit. And it's been formed that way over time, naturally by uh, geography. And the reason is it's, it's, a, it's at the bottom of a very steep slope. Uh, Reynolds Mountain is notorious for freshwater springs. When I built my house, we found four, and every one of them required a hydrologist to show up. It delayed the project, but it illustrated to me that on the steep slopes on Reynolds Mountain, there is so much water flowing and so much pressure with the water that I hope extra care will be given to this. I, I, I know that we don't have a... a, a land clearing or tree removal process, but I hope that this board will be, uh, look very hard at this project. <clears throat> I did observe the original terraces being built and there was serious inadequate use of silt fences. Uh, when I would go to exercise at the Y, rainstorms we would see literally what uh, the people working out, we called it the orange sludge. It was literally a flood of rocks and mud that flowed down <clears throat> to the intersection at Merriman, it was a mess. So I hope that moving forward, this project will use much more uh, determination and better use of silt fences. Um, it's traffic study. Reynolds Mountain is a narrow two-lane asphalt road. It makes some very sharp curves as you come up the road. This will require over a long period of time, hundreds of dump truck roads and uh, trips and concrete uh, trucks coming up these steep slopes and these sharp curves. As a resident and a neighbor, I'm very concerned about what it would do to those roads. And Ryan, can we show the photographs that I sent you? I've made, I don't have access to. Oh, yeah. can you put them on the screen? 
I took some photographs. Of <clears throat> this plan, as proposed, calls for at least two entrances off of Senator, Senator Reynolds Road. And personally, I think they, they're going to create a serious health and safety issue. In my opinion, other than for marketing purposes, this project doesn't need access from Senator Reynolds Road. As you heard from Mr. Kessler, it will raise the sales price of these properties. They'll be able to say that they're, they're semi Reynolds Mountain properties. Uh, one entrance is proposed for a very sharp turn that's already problematic on the mountain. And Ms. Eisenhower is being so kind. I'm going to show you photographs of that. Um, I'm concerned that we're not hearing from the fire chief tonight because I do think that they need to take a look at this because one of a, a, a myriad of uh, thank you so much. And just hit the arrow to go forward. This is looking downhill at Senator Reynolds, and over here on the right, just below this, at the bottom of the photograph, will be where one of these sharp turns. To the left is a single family residence currently being used as an Airbnb. And <clears throat> so you'll see that coming down the mountain, you'll have to be, residents will have to be very careful to watch for construction vehicles and residences coming out there. This is looking up the mountain at the other side of the street. This will someday be completely developed. So there's going to be even more residences, more traffic on this narrow road. This is looking downhill up. And as best I can tell from the map, they were, they were very vague. They were hard to look at because they were so small. Right there on this curve to the left will be what I think is the scariest entrance from Senator Reynolds Road. And I can't imagine what would happen as a resident. I'm very worried that a concrete truck getting stuck, a backup of pickup trucks for workers parked along the road. It's very, it takes the whole road to get a fire engine up Senator Reynolds Road now. So I don't think that there's any good reason to require entrances off of Senator Reynolds. I really wish that the developer would have all access from cobblers or something down that way. And this again shows the downhill slope. This will, their development will be to the right. And again, to the left, there will be even more development coming down the road. Um, in closing, I just want to remind you that you don't have to make the final decision on this project tonight. It's in, within your prerogative to delay a decision while this developer considers some positive changes and perhaps even meeting with the neighborhood associations to talk about these concerns. We haven't had the chance to do that. But I do support more housing. I do support this project. I just can't say enough about what a bad idea to access any of these units from Senator Reynolds Road is. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jim. We do have a letter from Darren and Stephanie Buck who aren't here, but you can read it. You are able to read and consider this. Yeah. Do we need to read it out loud? The letter. Oh, do I need to read this letter out loud? They're not here, but they submitted it. Can we just read it? That would be typically considered hearsay if they're not here to cross examine. So it's in the survey. Just for us to okay. call them off the board. Okay. Consider it for rejecting. Okay. Cross examine the people. Okay. But if Do I need to read the motion for us to consider it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Determine whether or not you'd like to read and waive the letter. Uh, Wilson Sims Jr., would you like to come off the podium? Please state your name and address. Can you hear me? It's Wilson Sims Jr., 303 Ava Lane, 28804. Thank you. Just got a, a comment to make. Um, uh, so thank you, Planning Board, Commissioners, Town of Woodfin staff and fellow citizens of our wonderful community. The purpose of my comments is to support plans for the development and to encourage, and I'm a neighbor there in the terrace just right across the way, and to encourage as part of the project that sidewalks and speed bumps be included appropriately. Everyday citizens from the terrace and up on Reynolds Mountain traverse Senator Reynolds Road in order to get to the YMCA restaurants to take exercise 
A point in case my 90 year old neighbor, Mrs. Kim and her daughter walk this road, walk in, in, this, in this road every day because there is no sidewalk. The, uh, the elderly like Mrs. Kim, children and pets and all, all walk in the roadway up and down to achieve their destination. There is a safety issue right in front of us and we've all gotten so accustomed over the years to walking in the roadway <laughs> that we're blind, we blind to the significant safety issue. I have no doubt that Woodfin Police Chief Dykes and his officers can both verify and comment on this safety issue that they see every day. When former town administrator Eric Hardy came to speak to our terrace neighbors in early 2020, the issues of sidewalks on this stretch of Senator Reynolds was, was a high priority for him. Mr. Hardy told us uh, this and we have patiently waited. To underscore this issue, 301 Ava Lane Terrace residents Larry Hopkins has spoken to commissioners at meetings as recently as 18 months ago uh, uh, on, regarding this stretch of Senator Reynolds receiving speed bumps. And we were given assurances by commissioners that there was a process underway to get this done. And we have, we have patiently waited. In summary tonight, we have an opportunity to support this terrific new Woodfin development. Uh, and we have an opportunity while conducting this construction to build proper sidewalks and place proper speed bumps, which should have been done years ago, to correct an omission. And third, we have an opportunity to change Senator Reynolds Road from a dangerous and unsafe daily, daily situation to an example of how the town, developers, businesses, and citizen partners partner uh, and best practices uh, to accommodate best practices in community building. We love Woodfin and what's going on. Let's get this done. Thank you. Thank you. Gary Wald. Mr. Wald, if you just give us your name and address for the record. Gary Wald, 58 Points West Drive. I'm a resident of The Views, and I have three, four concerns about this project. They have to do with concern about slope stability, concerns about storm water flow, concerns about traffic congestion, and the verticalness of the site and how much of the construction is actually being put. I think, ma'am, you raised the question, is the slope too vertical to build? And yes, I'd like to ask the, the question of how, what is the elevation gain from bottom to top? And how much of this is really being concentrated? You said mentioned nine acres, but it's really how much is being concentrated in a small <coughs> portion of the, of the parcel. The bigger concern, however, is slope stability. And you may or may not know that North Carolina Bureau of Land Management has mapped all of Reynolds Mountain. And the street right above the views, which is South Point Drive, has been identified as a high risk area for mudslide and landslide anytime there is five inches or more of rain in a 24 hour day period. That is noted in their maps, both sides of South Point Drive, which is the street right above the views. And therefore, that presents risks to the views and all below. And wonder what is being done to stabilize the slope after all this construction is being made. <coughs> the second point of stormwater, you may or may not know, all of the stormwater in, in, on, uh, in the views and on Reynolds Mountain, none of it goes into wood fin sewers. It all goes into pipings that then cascades down to lower levels. So the gentleman who said it's all going into sewers, none of, none of Reynolds Mountain, none of the views, water 
goes into any of the wood fin sewer system. In fact, uh, one of the residents in the views has a 30 inch wide drain pipe coming out her back slope, which funnels down into the proposed building site. Where's that water gonna go now? As we take trees away, as we take greenery away, which absorbs some of that water, where's it gonna go? What's the plan to have all this water now, which is gonna further erode the mountain and really destabilize the mountain? We've already heard mention about traffic. You know, if I think about 42 units, 42 units will have probably 70, 80 cars in and out of there every day. And how are 70, 80 cars gonna get out on Center Reynolds Road? At least half of them are proposed to get out on Center Reynolds Road. The proposal to get them down <coughs> on, on other streets probably makes a lot more sense. And as I said, much of the acreage is being used if, if, if the steepness of this, of up, up the views, this steep and not being built here, all of these 42 units are being congested into a much smaller piece. And I would really ask you to rethink how many units per acre are really being built. You've already heard there's no play area, there's no recreational area, there's no sidewalks. So it's not really being done as a community where it will have easy in and out. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah. So that's everybody I have listed. Is there anybody else here tonight who has sat patiently and wishes to speak? Yes, sir, and your name? John Webb. And were you sworn in earlier? Excuse me? Were you no. sworn in earlier? No. Okay, let's go ahead and do that for you. <clears throat> if I find the right paper, <laughs> we can just sworn in. No, no. You ready? Sure. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you shall give to the board in this action shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. For the record, would you please your name and address? John Webb. I live at 76 Midland Drive in Asheville, North Carolina, but I'm I'm here representing, I am broker with NAI Beverly Hanks. I represent the YMCA of Western North Carolina that owns land as well as a Reynolds Village Master Association, which is also one of the property owners. And just to say that both those organizations, I've been authorized to tell you, fully support this project. And they're both um, uh, res you know, corporate offices in, in Woodfin. So that's what I want to say. That's right. Thank, Thank you. you. At this time, does the developer wish to, oh, sorry. Did you miss the yes, yes. Yeah, I was going to say, would you like to? Uh, so I think the way I would like, if you don't mind, to handle this, I'm sorry. But what I'd like to do is let me get the professionals up and let them better answer some of these concerns of the stormwater, the more technical things. Let me see what residual issues there are now trying to address those. They're more to business level. So let's start with. Um, Brad, I Brad, you want to just in detail explain uh, uh, a CO2 unit that will alleviate some of the concerns over stormwater, et cetera, um, water, sewer. This is your gig. <laughs> yeah, sure. And were you sworn in earlier? Yes. Okay, great. My name is Brad Howell. I'm with Advantage Civil Engineering here in Asheville. Um, where to begin? I believe the sto slope st stability, is, uh, we'll s could start there. And I believe Harold, you know, we talked about needing to get a geotechnical engineer involved mm -hmm. to come out to the site mm -hmm. and perform various tests um, across the parcel just to understand, you know, the stability of our slopes and our soils where we are planning to uh, construct roads, build homes, um, implement our stormwater measures. And um, I believe that's going to take place. Um, we've got, I'm not sure exactly who's on board yet, but we've talked about that and that was uh, agreed upon. 
um, stormwater will be designed um, per Buncombe County standards and specifications. That is a very intense and detailed review process. Um, Victoria Holland, who we work with, you know, she's the stormwater administrator now for Buncombe County, is very thorough. And um, so, you know, th there are rules and regulations that will manage the stormwater. The additional impervious that we are proposing, we have to design BMP best management practices for these stormwater measures to handle all the additional impervious that is um, that we're creating. The sewer is indeed metropolitan sewerage district. It is not Woodfin's sewerage pipes. And again, we have received our allocation for all of these units from MSD. And that process is essentially you, you tell them how much, you know, discharge, gallons per day, that these units will create. They run through their calculations and they determine if they have the, the capacity, which they do. We but have that no has nothing to do with stormwater. That has nothing to do with stormwater. Right. That's stormwater does not go you, into the sewer. That's when you flush pipes. the toilet. That's right. Okay. And all your sinks, dishwashers, Got those it. things. Um, the stormwater is contained in you're probably mostly familiar with like stormwater ponds and things like that, dry detention ponds, bioretention cells, and some of it may be familiar with like underground storm tech systems. And what those are all created and designed to do is to contain the stormwater runoff to a pre-development level, meaning it just doesn't all of a sudden we build new roads and just let all the water race out into the, the forest or onto your neighbor's property. There'd be pipes, boxes that direct this water, this additional stormwater, into BMPs as they're called, whether it be a retention pond, an infiltration trench, a storm tech system that contains the water, again, to pre-development levels. Okay, I have another question. I'm sorry. Uh, my question is, so what engineer does that? We do. You do? Yes. So you, do, you draw up a plan? Yes. And it's not done yet? It's, we're in, it's in the works. It's in the works, but you haven't completed it. Well, it's, it's no, and it hasn't, it's not complete, it's not 100 percent completed. You haven't submitted anything to Buncombe County. For the stormwater, not yet. We're this close. Okay, okay. We've got it designed, it's laid out. Um, we're just kind of running through our calculations to make sure that our numbers are where we like them, need them to be, so that when we submit it to Buncombe County, mm -hmm. right. hopefully we can get, you know, an approval, mm -hmm. a permit. There's a question from an aide from the audience to Mr. Howell. We don't have, he's not a party. We show him to have standing for now. No. no, sorry. Maybe we'll cover it for you. Yeah. Yeah. And then the water, um, again, that I didn't, wasn't fully um, clear when I, what I stated earlier. What happens is we work with wood from water to develop, you know, kind of a plan, a strategy. And then that is actually goes to Raleigh. I'm gonna have to hold you. For us I'm gonna have to ask that you hold, hold your question for after the meeting. <coughs> Sorry, Brad, go ahead. That's, I mean, that's kind of the gist of it. We're, 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 we're abiding by all of the rules. Right. You know, we have to, we won't put our seal on anything right. if oh, we are sure. not confident right. that it is in the it's, best it's interest of public safety. We just have to know you're doing it, and we want the neighbors to know that in good faith that, that we're doing it. Absolutely, yes. Um, I do, I, I know you mentioned working with Brian earlier about access. Um, can we talk about how we reach that? Like, I mean, is it the North Carolina Fire Code? Like, what made you come up with the access? What's going on Center Reynolds Road versus? Mm, that's 
I would like to touch on the uh, fire department meeting with the fire marshal. I did personally meet with the fire marshal and presented our plan to him and his team. That was the fire marshal and like five other firemen, firefighters. And uh, they approved it. They liked what they saw. You know, we did, we do have an emergency vehicle turnaround towards the end of the road that's accessed of the lower units. Um, and they had no problems at all with the two access points coming off of Senator Reynolds Road. The reason we decided to have multiple access points was again because of the steepness of the site. In order to, for us to put a road coming from Cobbler's Way all the way up to the 14 units at the top would require a very substantial amount of grading and possibly large retaining walls, larger than any of us really wanted to. Uh, it just made sense from a, from a grading standpoint to, to try to limit our, our LOD, which is our limits of disturbance. We tried to keep that at a minimum if possible. Well, as much as we can. And have you guys thought about a construction phase plan and what you're going to do with construction vehicles on this Reynolds Mountain Road? I'm just asking for the neighbors. Do that yet? No, we have not cons <laughs> done a construction staging plan just yet. I'm trusting that you're going to be good stewards of that. Mm, absolutely. That ties into my question. This this section where you've built the other townhomes and up to the top of this plan. It, Road damage? Are you guys planning to repave all of that when you're complete? When your project's completed? That I know it's just a section that you guys are heavily using. I'd have to turn that question over to Harold. This section here that you're, where your other townhomes that you just finished, going up to the top of this project, where the last two single-family homes are. Are you planning to repave that section of the road at, when you're complete with everything? Just because I know it's probably getting damaged, and I know the neighbors are concerned about that. Is that you're going to find that with all the, all of the construction we've already done, and I'm going to address something else at the same time. But with everything that's been done, we haven't damaged any roads. Any roads. I wouldn't expect it to be damaged here either. Obviously, it'd be damaged. damaged you're going to fix it. Yeah. That's, that's obvious, but the issues regarding the roads are that we have a road that has never been completed in the first place. It never was a road, quite frankly, and we'll talk about that later. Um, uh, uh, that stretch, for some reason, only has, a, has the first lift of asphalt and never got the final lift. That's why it looks so ratty. Okay. You know, and so while I'm on that subject, uh, you know, the, the, the statement was made, well, look at all the mud. And that is, you know, that's came down during construction. You know, we we were dealt a terrible hand in buying that property. It didn't have, on the part that all the townhomes are on, the 4.71 acres, there wasn't a stick of greenery on there whatsoever. It was solid uh, earth, and the earth that had been moved around and easily washed away. No one ever required them, shockingly to me, because I come from other areas where we developed that should have been stabilized before it was ever, before before I ever bought it. But it was allowed, and so we did our best in the situation. And they're right, there was sand, the yeah. stuff washed down there, Brian tried to clean it up as best as he could. I can only tell you, luckily it was a temporary issue, and looking at it today, it's gone and it's done. But, but, but um, the gentleman is absolutely correct. We, we did get that. We're, I cannot see how that will happen here. Just given, given the dynamics of it. Mm -hmm. Were we allowed to <clears throat> put a condition on a performance bond for the existing roadways no. that they used during construction? No, that would be built into your ordinances and would be for the town to do and not this board to do. Okay. It's worth a shot. So much okay. We had to just say whether basically it's allowed with a special use or not. Have they been issued? They're performing.
that's why Adrian's doing yeah. that thing. That's uh, or is it? Um, so I have a question. Something you mentioned earlier, I believe, if I heard it correctly, you said that you are agreeing to have a geotechnical engineering report study done. Yes. Okay. So okay. So I don't know what we have in our standards. I mean, let's, close, can, okay. like, let's, let's finish up just a second. Okay, Adrian, I do have one question before. Um, have they hit a threshold for a traffic study based on our ordinance? No, they're trying to they're following the deal ordinance. Which is it's not required. Traffic studies not required. No, based on the ordinance. Are you going to look in your agenda? Does anybody on the board before we go into deliberation have any other questions for the developer? I don't. I'm going to keep it open in case once we start deliberating, we may have some questions. Um, and it's probably going to give us a few minutes because we have a lot of information to decompress here. Um, so if you can, can they take a break or no, they want to? Uh, they're, they're allowed to leave. You're allowed to leave or take a break. <laughs> We're going to keep working. Can we provide further explanation? Or you are we stopping the... If you would like to, to sum something up. I, 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 I've always been told I, I need to learn to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but I, my, one of my professionals, um, Jason, who did the site, I think he contributed a great deal with regard to slopes and some of the other things that were said. I think there's enough really people here that probably would like to hear that, so let's go yeah. ahead and like What did he do? He did the site. He did the site? Mm -hmm. yeah. And were you sworn in earlier? Yes, I was. And your uh, name and address? Yeah, Jason Gillen. I'm a professional landscape architect and land planner in okay. 10D South Main Street in Weaverville. Okay. Um, <laughs> just a few things I wanted to clarify. Um, other than the shared driveway access to the two residential homes, not the duplex units, there is curb and gutter on Senator Mount, Senator Reynolds Road that fronts our property for the two accesses to the duplex units. Um, that is one. Um, two, with regards to slope, yes, there are some steep slopes on this property. Um, when we started our initial planning, we conducted a slope analysis. Based on that slope analysis, we identified pockets of development. Uh, those three major pockets are what we are showing the development of these <coughs> townhomes to be, avoiding, essentially avoiding slopes over 30%. So um, we do that in, in almost every development that we plan. That's why we have multiple pockets of development. In our initial plan, we had a through connection as discussed, and that was through a steep portion of the site, and it was um, uh, one ACE did some grading on that layout. It was proven to have a significant amount of disturbance that none of us felt comfortable with. We, we cut that access off, limited disturbance, and also uh, divided the traffic concern to the 14 units off the one road and the remaining units off of Cobbler's Way. So we felt um, much more positive about that. I think um, Adrian saw that initial concept and we've come back with an adjustment to that from our original conversations. Um, I have a question. Yes. Cobbler's Way. I, I haven't paid much attention to that because Jim showed us all the pictures of Senator Reynolds Road, but there's very few on this road as compared to all of them that are here on the other side on Cobbler's. So what kind of road is that? That, that um, on the main um, drive through the village? Yeah. Um, I guess you'll pass the orthodontist on the right, and at that intersection you turn left and the property is on your left. And it has a narrow, I would call commercial strip, and then it climbs climbs the mountain to this ridge that we And is it a two-lane road? It is, yes ma'am. It, it, it is the access road to the senior living, uh, assisted living project. 
it's a major road. Yeah. Okay. Like you didn't address it, but okay. it's a major road. It's 50 yards long, 100 yards long, off of Merriman, right? Off of Merriman, it's a... Okay, because it looks like that's where all the construction vehicles are going to be and everything. Well, those are the This means the primary yeah. access to the extent we can do it. Yeah. Well, we'll be okay, okay, just, just clarifying that. Okay, thank you. Um, and one more thing, and I think we might have some additional. Um, so everybody um, continues to talk about sewer, and I would like to clarify, one, their storm drainage, and two, their sanitary sewer. Sanitary sewer is what you flush down the toilet. Storm water is what runs down the hill. So yes, there are currently no storm water facilities on the road. However, in this location, not on our parcels of development, in this location, there's what people refer to as the pit. This mountain is draining to this pit. It's being discharged through a pipe on this fill slope, which you can tell we're avoiding with development or future utilities. And it is piped to approximately, and there's a huge stormwater facility here. Can we see it? So it comes down the hill to this point, right. and it's piped to this location. Okay, so when you start construction on this whole grouping over here, mm -hmm. and you start taking down trees and things like that, where's that stormwater going to go? So this facility is coming down this road, discharging into that stormwater. Right. Same here. Okay. And what we have to do, and I would like to <coughs> also clarify this, at the time that Reynolds Mountain was developed, these stormwater ordinances were not in place. That has since changed. We are, we are in a new era of requirements. So as Brad stated, pre and post construction, based on calculations, essentially have to be the same. So this will be captured, treated, and released slowly as if this was still woods. Mm -hmm. And, but what about that side where all the all the that construction and then this will you know release slowly into here this will come down the hill and the, here we divided it into three smaller storm systems okay okay so this gets treated here that gets treated here this gets treated there by um detention retention basis what we what are you what are you actually talking about jellyfish <laughs> ground system and guys you're gonna have to explain yeah. that. Yeah. so so you can see there's five, you know, there may be potentially six different facilities when they get done with those calculations. But we've divided this into smaller systems to deal with pockets of development. Okay. Okay. Thank you. If you want a further understanding of how that works, we have the people yeah. here. That's, you that's, do? Do you want to hear it? I'm curious as to what type of device. I mean, I've been through yeah. Sure. All different kind of basins and jellyfish and all so, kind of weird things. So Are you sworn in? Yes, I'm sworn in. I'm a land photographer. I'm with the Advanced Engineering. Um, so um, this hasn't been mentioned yet. The stormwater is uh, a low impact uh, design, so, uh, so that sort of reduces the amount of clearing uh, you know, all that stuff you have to do. And uh, this type of systems we're going to, we're proposing now, are uh, underground infiltration systems. So they're akin to, uh, are similar to viral infection cells. So instead of a, a, like a medium, like a bio medium, you just have gravel. And um, they function the same way. A lot of this coastal stormwater will just infiltrate into the ground, and then any overflow will come up through the uh, top of the mirror, which reduces uh, flow around those. And so they're really low flow uh, releases, and uh, you know, they're on the ground, so you can't see them. And you can walk on them and do all that stuff. It's uh, not really a big deal. You don't have to worry about um, maintenance, it's going to be easy on these. Uh, Keep it easy that the, the low impact uh, design makes it uh, less intrusive uh, to use. Okay. 
So I have a question with that, because where I came from, we put in a lot of underground storage things up in New Jersey area and stuff like that. They are very high maintenance. The ones I've dealt with are very high maintenance, very very expensive because you have um, confined space entry and you have materials that's got to be replaced, fillers that's got to be cleaned. So are these, can you describe the, who is going to maintain them? Is the development going to maintain these or is this going to be a wood fit problem? It'll be HOA. Okay. okay. If it's any help to this board, uh, under stormwater controls, once a development's done, there has to be recorded maintenance mm -hmm. provisions on the public record assigned to the HOA and law requires that those systems be inspected annually. Okay. At their, their, At their dollar. Expense. Okay. So I'd like to add one more thing. This is not a typical for us to go through this process in any type of development. Um, we're at about a 30, 40 percent design level, and at that level, we get our allocations. Do we have capacity? We know that we need an architect. We know that we need a geotech <coughs> that gives the architect and a structural engineer recommendations on foundations, slope stability. That is forthcoming. Those are going to be required to get building permits, to get permits for utilities. So that is semantics beyond this point. Uh, I think, uh, although it's not a requirement for the board to approve this, but I think they were trying to raise the comfort level of your audience sure. rather than the information they need for this, sure. this approval. Or this well, I just wanted to reiterate that. Thank you. So in order for them to get permits, they need to submit the geo right. in the specific So board. inevitably, right, all of the conditions, and we that's part of the conditions for group development okay. is the special use permit, that then they obtain all of those approvals. Okay. So what we have to decide is, it, is it allowed via a special use permit, which it is because it's more family. Right. Okay, so we're out. We're going to take a few minutes and de right. deliberate if you guys want to take a break or feel free to leave. But we're going to work through some things. Okay. Go for it. So I have a question. So, again, I come from a different world. Um, in my personal work experience, we dealt with underwater storm management. New Jersey's like the top of the world with PNA, so that stuff. So I'm familiar with a lot of this stuff. So I'm happy to hear some of the stuff that's on the system. Then, we granted permission approvals like that. We had a whole list that was standard conditions. Can we automatically do that? Like we, we make this approval, but it's conditioned upon fire marshal, Duke, and all that stuff. Like, yes and no. So if it's in our ordinance, we can. You want me to tell them to be quiet? Yeah. <laughs> if you'd like to talk, we'll just ask that you go outside in the hallway just so we can hear each other. Thank you. So if it's in our ordinance, then we can say via the following conditions. Um, if it's not, then we can. So a lot of times, like this is what Adrienne will give you. And she'll pretty much say like group development can be approved if you've met the following things okay. but a lot of the things that you're thinking about are all going to be part of the development anyway. process it's yeah, not they like can't get construction permits still right. yeah. Yeah. our approval yeah. doesn't yeah. give them yeah. permission to go do this they yeah. still have to go through agents yeah. for yeah. approval they still have to go to buncombe county for yeah. 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 so it's not up to us to have to worry about it okay. Okay. Oh, no. oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. all right okay. so what we have to look at is like no, no. So we, we go through the same thing, like will this establishment, like we're going to ask ourselves the same questions, right. and then we have to go through these, so this what is, is what, this is out of our ordinance, yeah, this she, is oh, she okay. gave it, and you gave us each copy of it. So I do feel like like the general consensus for this project from the peanut gallery that they is that they they are in support as long their fears are you know traffic and, right. but I didn't hear anybody that raised any flags that made me feel like they were right right um, and if you read the first sentence in, in Adrian's staff report it says a special use permit is requested but it also says that that it's allowed so it says just, had it this whole time and now I've lost it. Yeah, there it is. Sorry. 
property is zoned community shopping, which allows for multifamily development approval through the special use permit. So basically, we have a table in our ordinance that's allowed uses on their own, and then we have a table that's allowed via special use permits. So this multifamily development is allowed in that table with approval from the board based that they meet these conditions along with these. Okay. So that's what we'll talk through. Does okay. everybody feel good about that? Perfect. Yeah. Yep. I'm okay. good. So, um, will the establishment, maintenance, operation of the special use be detrimental to or endanger the public health, safety, as well as our comfort of the general welfare? Does anybody feel that way? No. No? I don't think so. So, just for fun. Yeah, so basically I, I said no because I feel like they presented enough facts that, yeah. that cover those concerns <laughs> of traffic. And the one piece that I didn't hear. Mm -hmm. um, you have a different one. Oh, that's right. That was a difference. Oh, yeah. That's the difference. Sorry. Sorry. Um, so it's not one. Uh, so it's uh, whether or not. Yeah, I probably do. It's kind of here somewhere. Um, she gave it to me. Here, got it. Especially this. Yeah. Um, so the one piece that I heard addressed was that of walking on Reynolds Mountain. Yeah. Um, and whether there is right, we don't have right. a sidewalk ordinance that requires right. them to put right. pedestrian. I mean, right. it would be or nice, speed bumps or anything right. else. Right. But you know, based on if it was in our ordinance and we required it, then we would say part of the condition of this approval right. is that you meet. Okay. Uh, right. But you know, it gives them a chance to. Right. And we can make a comment when we approve it that that we'd like for them to be we good sure stewards like, and work with yeah. their neighbors to right. match any concerns they have. Okay. Yeah. Good. So, okay. Number two. Special use being curious. Special use being curious. Other charges. No. I don't think so. I think it's actually the opposite. I think they showed that it actually will increase the values in the neighborhood. Yeah, I think so too. It's six hundred thousand. Six hundred thousand. I think so. Yeah, we're not talking. Okay. Will these now turn around? Retail business. And, yeah. and the other and what was group. Right. Right. Similar development already in place. Yeah. And the utilities at crossroads. Um, drainage. I don't know. That's we don't know. But well, they gave us the MSD and allocation and the letter of commitment from water. Right. right. And basically, number four on our condition says that they'll submit. Storm water plan approval to Bowman County. Okay. Uh, is this size development trigger to go to the planning board or site plan? Or they do we not? Still, we still have a site plan, but that site plan, as I understand, is the staff makes a finish that site check. Okay. So does this go before the board? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't have to no, go before no. the planning board. No, this one is exempt. Once you guys issue the special yeah. use permit, they have a special use permit. Because it's okay. already zoned the way they. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. And the following bullets, so is a special use in the case of two or more buildings to be constructed on a plot of ground or of at least two acres not, sub not subdivided into the customary streets and lots but in which not to be sub subdivided applications are may be varied by the planning board of adjustment in a manner that will be harmony with the character of the neighborhood provided. Number one says such uses are limited to those permitted within the zoning district, which is yes. on the table. Uh -huh. The project is located. It's multifamily and it's allowed. No mm -hmm. traffic study has been required. The distance of every building from the nearest property line shall meet the front yard. Mm -hmm. So that so number two, so whoever makes this motion needs to include that number two. So we have to say number one that it it's a that it is a permitted use. Right. It's multifamily is allowed, and that two that it, the distance of every building will meet the front and rear setbacks. The proposed group development project should be designed by a licensed architect. It was. Yeah, but yeah. we just have to include that in our approval. Mm -hmm. That it will be. Okay. Okay. Therefore, great development shall follow the review procedures for special uses as outlined in section 271 bylaws of the planning board. I don't know what that means. Hey, Adrian, on this um, group development shall follow the review procedures for special uses as outlined in section 271. Is that what we're doing? That's this meeting right here. That's, that's, that's that. Do we okay. need to include that in our motion? No, you're, you're actually, that's that. Right. 
I would just have to say that they did produce a mm -hmm. and was reviewed by this board. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm open the floor. All right. So, somebody um, feel like they can. So, are we before? Do we feel like we've got all of our questions answered? Do we feel like we're? Ready I do. To I move? feel like I'm ready to make a decision. Right. Yeah. yeah, I am too. Now that I know that everything's going to be followed so, up on. Yep. Yeah, the professionals answered pretty much all the questions okay. I had. I'd like to make a motion, and I sure hope I can figure out how to do it. Okay. Uh, Includes the <laughs> one through five of this paper. That's right. That was first, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I'd like to move that the uh, proposed. Uh, Development at 99999 North Merriman Avenue and Center Reynolds Road for the Town Home Development be approved based on the fact that they have established maintenance uh, that uh, that there is no danger to public health, safety, morals, or comfort, or general welfare. Um, there is. Uh, no evidence supporting that uh, this will be injurious to the use and enjoyment of other property in the immediate vicinity for the purposes already permitted. Uh, there is no evidence supporting that the uh, establishment will I'll flip this. There is evidence that the establishment of this special use will be in harmony with or compatible mm -hmm. with its neighbors and generally consistent with the comprehensive plan. And there will be adequate utilities, access roads, drainage, and, of, and or other necessary facilities. Um, and that we have um, in this uh, special use, uh, this is permitted, um, uh, permitted use within the zoning district in which the project is located. The distance of every building from the nearest property line shall meet the front yard setback and side yard requirements of the district in which the property is located. The proposed development shall be designed by a licensed architect. It shall be so designed that the overall intensity of land use shall be no greater than that permitted in the zoning district in which the property is project is located. Furthermore, the design should guarantee and will guarantee uh, permanent retention of open space and ensure its care and maintenance. Um, and uh, the project group has uh, produced and we have reviewed uh, group development plans, um, including submission of design plans showing proposed layout, including location of buildings, driveways, street parking spaces, and recreation areas to the planning board adjustment. Uh, uh, and we have studied uh, prior to final approval. Um, and we have seen at this point, the uh, approvals for both uh, proposed sanitary sewer and water distribution systems. Um, and um, the approved project will be started within 12 months and be completed within a reasonable time after its approval. Amen. <laughs> a second. Does that require the, geo, the geotechnical study? Yeah. We do. That is a post approval at construction level, not something this board approves. It's not in what the ordinance gives them the authority to require. And are you going to require uh, any written uh, letter from the fire department that there is no safety hazard? That, I mean, we, we, we have verbal. We that's have not for us. That. It, you, it, can it, make it, you can make this condition on that being provided in writing. And we, and further, I will, I will add that there will be a written letter from the fire department from the fire marshal declaring that there is no danger or difficulty for emergency vehicles. Would it be a fire chief? Huh? Would it be fire chief? Sure. I mean, whoever our Adrian would typically turn to for that approval, we would look look for that fire. Service area. Right. Yeah. I, I just don't know the 
fire marshal, fire chief. Yeah. I don't know which it's, exact one it'll be. Is it Buncombe County or is it Woodfin? No, no, yeah. it's, it's Woodfin. Woodfin. Okay. Woodfin. Any other suggested additions to my motion? One question. So there was something mentioned and stuff like that. Is there any way to put a condition that all construction vehicles will stay on their property? Or we cannot? No, no, no you can't do that. We can't do that. Okay. Just didn't know what was in our ordinances. Would be nice if we could <laughs> well, make those rules. The reality so. is, for us, it's special use permits either loud or it's not based on, on what they presented tonight. So, anybody second the motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll second. Mm -hmm. And we'll go ahead and vote in favor. Aye. Um, aye. 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 Motion approved. Okay. Yeah, yeah. One more. Thank you okay. Well, then, let's reset the end of the first quarter. Thank you. <laughs> what is it? What's the score? Three nothing. We, we do have one more item, so. We, we do have one person that cared about it. Oh, okay. So you. Is that person here? And this is a straight up Alabama. This is a straight up variance, correct? Nope, it's a special use. Yeah, it's a special use. I didn't ask anybody if we had any conflicts in any other ones. I forgot. That's right. We know how to clear a room. Okay, so we have one last item on the agenda. And this one. Uh, we now open the evidentiary hearing to hear a request for variance, or actually, sorry, special use permit. The board must base its decision on competent, relevant, and substantial evidence in the record. Witnesses must swear or affirm through their testimony. And this is a special use permit requested at 471 Olivet Road. It's temporary public works and utility storage. So I will say I went to high school with Josh and I work with him at the city, but it will not interfere with my decision on this board. Just to declare that, does anybody else have any? No, never saw before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Adrian. Um, so this is a special use permit for a temporary public works and utility storage. Um, the request is in response to a project by Duke Energy for the Craggy Inca Reliability Transmission Line Upgrade Project. They um, identified this site as a good site for um, temporary uh, storage of the construction equipment they're using for that project. Um, I, Josh can give you some more information on the details. From what I understand, the project's not slated to start for a couple more years. Um, and once it is started, the site will be used for a year for this purpose. This is a little bit of a gray area based on our current ordinance, but this district allows for public works and utilities facilities as a special use. And so since it's a temporary use, I decided to allow the applicant to request this permit. Great. Josh? Chair, members of the board, thank you for hearing our application. Thank you for your service to the community and for your perseverance tonight. <laughs> uh, we will uh, we'll get you out of here real fast. I didn't even bring my notes. I'll shoot from the hip. Um, partly because our, our friend Kenny Buckner here, who lives beside the site, is uh, kind enough to be here speaking in favor of our project. And his reward for it is he's missing the uh, his beloved Georgia Bulldogs. Oh, yeah. Oh, so we just got to hurry. Uh, as Adrian <laughs> mentioned, we have applied for the special use permit because we're the R2, R10 uh, zoning designation and the language isn't perfectly clear as to whether or not this is a permitted use. Um, the, uh, the project is to serve Duke Energy. Uh, this is part of the uh, Craggy to Inca uh, 
improvement project uh, for reliability. What that means is uh, this is a nine mile project from Craggy, uh, right beside us, all the way to uh, the Sardis Road, Inca area. And Duke desires to have lay down yards on both sides of the project. Uh, this is a perfect site for it, um, primarily because it is right on the right of way. Uh, we'll stick around here. Uh, this is the substation uh, near Flynn Branch Road, uh, just off Olivet Road on the west side of the river. Uh, this is our site here in yellow. And you can't really see it on this drawing, but, uh, well, the blue is the center of the existing right-of-way. So as part of this modernization project, all of the, uh, the structures uh, and lines, poles, will be replaced with more modern, more efficient equipment. Um, one of the questions in the application states, uh, you know, how is this project not detrimental to your neighbors? We would like to, to state that it's not only not detrimental, this is actually a benefit to this community. Uh, what this does is it keeps uh, Duke Energy large trucks and equipment off of the public roads. Uh, they can actually travel a, a part of this uh, without ever getting on the roads. So um, we are uh, looking to make this work. Uh, it is temporary in nature, um, as Adrian stated. It may or may not start a couple of years from now. Duke Energy uh, once thought it would start two or three years from now and be a total five-year project from about present day to completion. Uh, Duke, you know, full disclosure, has come back and said that they may make use of the site much sooner. So I don't really know exactly when it will begin, but we do expect the full duration to be t uh, five years. Um, in, in care for our neighbors. We are proposing to voluntarily uh, fence this site with a uh, chain link fence with screening on the fence and additionally plant a double row of landscape trees uh, so as to not disturb our neighbors. Uh, there won't be any operations here overnight or on weekends after hours so it should not cause any disruption to the neighbors. Uh, if you'll bear with me for just a second just so you know <laughs> a little bit about me. Uh, clearly, uh, Susanna and I did go to school together. Uh, in fact, um, I grew up uh, the first few years of my life right here at 231 Macedonia Road. My parents built their second home just beside that at 333 Macedonia Road. I built my first home here at 1018 Olivet. I currently live right here at 764 Macedonia. So do you own that property? Uh, uh, we have this property under contract. Um, in this present era, as you may know if you deal in real estate at all, uh, pricing is pretty exorbitant. Uh, the owners of this land are, are asking uh, an exorbitant price for this property. Uh, I'm sure I'll get the question, what happens if the special use permit is not granted? Yeah. If it's not granted, we won't buy the property. Uh, we are scheduled to close at the end of this month, but due to the price, uh, as we say in the development world, it does not pencil out. Uh, there's no way to make a future development work on this property without having the benefit of the Duke Energy lease right. in the meantime. Okay. And the point of taking you through that little exercise about our involvement is to let you know that we are not just uh, developers from another area. This is our community. You know, these are our people. Uh, they will run us out of town faster than they'll run you out of town, I promise. So you work for Duke? No, no, I'm, I'm not related to Duke at all. Uh, my dad and I own a surveying company. Lance oh, okay. It's my dad, Ed. Uh, we would buy this property together. At the end of the five-year period, uh, when Duke vacates it, they will remove all of their equipment, mm -hmm. and we would plan to do a development on the property, which does fit with the R2, R10 zoning. Josh, can you talk about what like their operations is going to look like? I mean, are we talking about trucks like coming and going all hours of the night and day? Or No, 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 no operations after hours wrong. Yeah. Um, so you, can, you can only barely yeah. see it from this inset, uh, but this is just to put poles and wires and, and things of that nature on. Mm. This is smart. Okay. Do you expect any kind of um, damage to the environment from the vehicles themselves, from 
no, oil and gas the, leakage, blah, 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 blah. No, blah. quite the opposite. That's, that's one of the benefits of having this site on the existing right-of-way line is, no, we're keeping uh, vehicles off the road and out of the public way. Uh, it's, it's more I, environmentally friendly, and as far as the actual site itself and, and contaminants, I don't expect that either. And in addition, uh, we are responsible for all uh, planning and uh, permitting, and as part of their project, they will put down 12 inches of stone as a base. So what's the road? What's the access to this property? All of that road. It's that blue line? No, the blue oh, line right. is the uh, existing car line right of way. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, all of that Where's road all of is here in the white. So gotcha. we have direct access on all okay. of that road. Okay. So I guess I'm a little bit confused. So you're buying the property, you're going to lease it to Duke for a period of five years? That's correct. Okay. Now I got it. All right. Yeah, and how that came about is we had another property in the area that they, they identified and said, they reached out to us and said, hey, your, your property that you have on Macedonia Road is perfect for our project. And our response was that project is already under development and under contract to sell. And after a lengthy search, you literally couldn't find any of the properties that were. And so they came back to us and because they know us and they were from the area, they said, can you help us? And so we were able to find this property. Okay. <clears throat> so I have a question, and I hear what you're saying about no after hours, no weekends. I just retired after 33 years working electric utility in New Jersey. We have been through all this stuff and we've been doing it for the last 15 years. We had to work around the clock. We had to work weekends because of outages and restrictions on electrical flows. So I have a feeling personally that I don't see it happening during daytime. I'm not doubting your work, I'm not sure. questioning you. But uh, when it comes to construction, they're putting new monopoles up, I'm assuming. There's a new tower line. So they're going to be putting drilling foundations the whole length and all that stuff. <clears throat> Doesn't seem to always work between 7 and 3.30. Um, are you, that going to be a condition of your, we can make that a condition? I mean, I don't want to you know, uh, really do that because the real world uh, utilities yeah. work around the clock. Well, in public utility, are exempt from things like noise ordinances and things like that. Uh, no. no. <laughs> I would tell you that this, uh, you know, this project is not related to storm repair, storm cleanup. This is a scheduled project mm, over a five-year period. So I wouldn't think that, uh, you know, storms and other activities cause some unusual work hours. I think this is simply right. a, a, a project with a set duration with, quite frankly, excess time built in. It's more a staging of like construction equipment. It's simple holes. staging of equipment. Yeah. Yeah. Strictly lay down areas where it's going to be. Right. Are you going to have office buildings there, construction trailers? No. It's just strictly lay down. Strictly lay down. Okay. okay. Mr. Banner, would you like to speak? Yeah, yeah. My, my name's Ken Butler. And like Josh said, my family owns the adjoining property, the majority of the adjoining property to their project. And I'm not speaking on the half. Duke Energy, but I'm a 41-year employee that's just retired. Huh. Some of your questions I can't answer. As far as working that group on storm, it's a transmission work for Duke Energy is a whole different company. I don't mean I don't energy. mean storm work because I get that part of it. Well, I mean, but you were thinking that maybe they'd be pulled off and they'd be working. Due to no, due to construction practices. I've never seen a utility construction be stuck between 7 and 3.30 because you have deadlines and you have electrical outages and if you take a transmission outage, you have to make other arrangements. So sometimes you can only get it on the weekends. You can only get it on the overnights. Right. Which you're the one living there, not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, we live, I don't live on that piece of property. My family does and my wife owns half of it. Okay. So, um, so you're not going to have any storm work on that piece of property. Or whether it's going to be on the other side of the river or the other side of the county, this going to do that problem. Mm -hmm. So it only makes sense to have that lay down yard on that piece of property, which impacts, not drop this, which impacts our family more than any other family in the neighborhood. And the second thing, like Josh had stated, he grew up there, Bones lived there. I don't know if this helps you or just hurt, but I, I've known for 50 years. <laughs> and that's the yeah. integrity of these two guys right here, and I'll throw the wife in too, keep them all straight. <laughs> it's great. I know you've got plenty of good contractors in 
Maybe it went from there, but these two are going to do what they say they're going to do. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, uh, like I say, safety-wise, uh, less impact to the community is to have that lay down yard. And we're not making nothing off of it. I'm going to make Josh buy me a hot dog after this when I'm missing that football game. I'm sorry. Right. Other than good. that, I mean, we have no monetary value for them putting that yard there other than giving my mother-in-law something to watch during the day to keep her occupied. Okay. So, that, that's all really i got to say. But as far as if there was a lay down yard out the road and they're having to carry these, I think they're going to be steel poles, single poles. Uh, if they have to carry them from across the river or across town or something, I mean, heavy equipment, the length of the poles and all that would, would be a bigger impact to do that than it would be to use that yard as a, as a lay down yard. Right. And I, like I said, I, I wasn't speaking on behalf of your energy because I'm going for that. <laughs> but, but most of what's going to be in that yard is poles, wire, insulators, Probably some equipment part there, uh, and, and, and since you've been in the business, you know power companies are probably the most scrutinized business in the world. They've already went through and done the environmental surveys, and, and as far as hand digging and testing, where they can set a pole where they can't set a pole, whether there's a, a one-eyed tadpole down in the creek you can't mess with. So the environmental people, tree forks. The environmental people will be on them more than Josh and Edward. Right. So they're, they're, they're heavily scrutinized. So uh, sorry, to give you one of these letters. But anyway, I mean, uh, that makes more sense. I don't suppose there's anybody here to the public. I don't know. But okay. That's that's my reason for that. Would be the question. Thank so, you. Yeah. Any other questions? He mentioned something that once this is done, they're going to have the property and they're going to come in for development. Yeah. Can this be conditional that it's only for this purpose and then they'll have to come back in for development? Or we don't have a can well, I was going to ask you during that same question. Since this is a gray area, can we limit the temporary or the special use to a five year period? Yeah. <coughs> it, it's temporary. My, my suggestion, of course, grew up construction is at 20% of the time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I get that. And I'm not saying hold them to a deadline, but my, my concern is when Duke is done, do they already be grandfathered in and come build development without no. coming back to the board? No, no, no. no. Okay. Absolutely no. Okay, that's, that's my concern. Tell them they already need the needs of the development. Use and development won't be back anyway. Yeah, this is different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, at this time, we'll take a few minutes and deliberate. Okay. <laughs> okay, you guys are done for the night. It's now seven three. Did we get seven three? No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we really do take our job seriously, I promise. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the proposed uh, the property development at four seventy one Olivet Road um, for the Duke Energy project uh, having established that um, there will not be any uh, detriment or danger to the public health, safety, morals, comfort, or general welfare of the community, um, that this will not be injurious to the use and enjoyment of other property in the immediate vicinity of the purposes already permitted, nor substantially diminish and impair property values within the neighborhood. Uh, that the establishment of the special use will be in harmony with or compatible with its neighbors and generally consistent with the comprehensive plan, that there are adequate utilities, access roads, drainage, and other facilities uh, provided, and that adequate measures uh, have been or will be taken to provide ingress and egress uh, to keep traffic to a minimum. I'm going to put a condition on your time. Oh, yeah, the time. And that the project will be done within six years. Okay. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion approved. Okay.
Awesome. That's it. Okay, get it. Adjourn. So this time, I'll, I'll take yes, a motion. I move that we adjourn. Well, they are. That's 115. Right, you guys, we're making a motion to adjourn. Okay. Adjourn. Set. Done. Yeah, we switched from all the old uh, lattice work and we did the old modern holes now. Yeah, with it. Yeah, everything went from. Usually only half my two or three. Two thirty, and we're doing two thirty five. I don't know, we're going to be 500.